I'm Vanessa. And I'm Travis. And we are late to the party, and it is our 101th episode 101 of... 101 of Better Late Than Never. Better Late Than Never. Better Late Than Never. She usually sings a song. Sometimes we get her there. But, Travis, I could only imagine what you would have chosen for 101. Uh, I feel like you would do like a play on words because you know 101. So I'm gonna I go big. I words? chose orgasm. Or is that a play on numbers? I <laughs> play on numbers, whatever. I play can't on wait stuff. To we do I... orgasmo and basketball and cannibal the musical. But but really, I did choose uh, one that goes with it. One. 101 Dalmatians. Now is this the live action okay, there movie we starring Jeff Daniels, Glenn Close, and And I would Joe. like to say that, yes, this is the live action movie, so technically Disney has always been doing live action movies. For quite oh, some movies time. Movies they've already done before. It is the original, in my opinion, live action movie from a cartoon. If There's probably other ones, though, but this is the one that This is the one that mind. stands yes. out in our mind yes, the most. Of course. But it was released November 27th of 1996, so yes, quite a ways before Maleficent started this whole thing. Yeah. Uh, had a budget of $75 million, made $320.7 million at the box office. Uh, directed by Stephen Hurek. Um, and it was, of course, based off of the 1961 Disney animated film, which is based upon a 1956 novel by Dottie Smith. Exactly. Same thing. So everything remakes, and remakes and remakes and uh remakes. -huh. So interesting, uh, back when they were making this film, Sigourney Weaver was offered the role of Cruella de Vil. Oh, really? Yeah, okay. so she kind of turned it down. I could see it, though. I could see her coming, coming in and doing Cruella de Vil. Cruella. Cruella de Vil. Cruella. Interesting, though, uh, Kathy Moratti. Moratti? Is that how you say her name? I'm sorry. Moriarty. Yeah, you know Moriarty. So if you know who she is, she was in Casper, right? Right. So they actually did screen tests for her to play that. And they I kind of realized that. she was a little too scary for the role, for this type of movie. Wait, are we talking about Kerrigan from yes. Casper? Yes. Oh, I don't know her last name. It could be Marathi, for all I know. But Either Kerrigan, ways. the deed's in there. She was also in Soap Dish. Disney felt like she was Moorhead, too scary in the, in the screen test. Montana so Moorhead? Handled Glenn Close. So that, Glenn that Close cackle, is though, a man. She's got that laugh. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so let's take a look at the 101 Dalmatians. Trailer. Trailer. Now. Now. Yes. Walt Disney Pictures. Oh, Jeff Daniels. I pronounce that there be man and wife. Oh, oh, they are here. Oh, they're here. Mrs. Wilson. Oh, I wanted a Dalmatian because it was very Seizures. One Dalmatian. Unbelievably precious. Lipstick. had a style all their own. I love it when they call them and then they bring them forth and they're just waiting to get their um, Cards, collars yeah. on. I worship them. Put them in a bag. I'll take them with me now. No. The puppies are not for sale. Take it! Now! Just wait! How to save Arthur Weasley. How to save Arthur Weasley. Disney Pictures presents. Get out of my truck! <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. Molasses. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I love that scene. Extend leg. Nope, don't do it. <laughs> 101 Dalmatians. <laughs> <laughs> 101 Dalmatians coming to you live. <laughs> Michael came into the music. So I love the acquainting scene when Jeff Daniels ends up meeting the love of his life thanks to Pongo, where they end up going through the park and he's just on the bike and it's not stopping and he ends up hitting the freaking uh, uh, bench. bench and just goes flying into the water. <laughs> uh, it's just so good too. And getting us acquainted where he's a struggling a uh, designer, a game designer, yeah. you know, instead of the musician, you've got him making these video games. It's relevant. Do you like my new song? But yeah, uh, just getting acquainted and, and getting the family together, getting yeah. all the puppies, it made you connected, it made you invested. Uh -huh. That's something that some of the live action movies just don't do no. when it comes to making you feel for those characters the way you felt for them 
when you watched it on uh, the cartoon. And originally. I just love how they acquired more puppies at the end. Like, they were just like, you know what, we'll just keep them all. <laughs> they did what he said he was going to do. Yeah. We'll have a Dalmatian plantation. A Dalmatian plantation. And they actually the did it. Together. Yeah, they yeah. did it. They, they, their kids and their kids and their kids, all of them together. Uh, but yeah, of course, the shining star out of this whole thing. That's why her name, I think, came first. Glenn Close, uh, Cru Cruella de Vil. Oh, she did such an amazing job as Cruella. <laughs> she embodied what Cruella was like from the animated movie, and I remember watching it, and I was like, they, it's like they took her right out of the animated right, right. movie. <laughs> Even with the damn cigarette just on the right. stick. So and because good. of her, her portrayal of this character, I think is why Disney wants to make a movie based upon her in her early years. And that's why there's a, this movie coming out with Emma Stone, released for December 23rd of 2020. Sure. So, yeah, she, Glenn Close, amazing choice. Right. Did amazing with this movie. I will say, however, that I was not too keen on 102 Dalmatians nope. whatsoever. Never I mean, saw they brought it. her not good. in, and then they just made it so weird where she's, like, in a mental hospital, and they did, like, some kind of therapy on her to where she's, like, loves... Puppies. The puppies and loves the Dalmatians and stuff, and then all of a sudden it like starts to like mess with her. Not enough. And it's gone. And is <laughs> it was just yeah, it was weird. I didn't really care for the second one, but I love the first one. And it's funny how 102 Dalmatians ends up going on its own. It ends up making its own story in the world, but yet we didn't like it as much. It's like, no, I want you to redo all the same stuff we already saw, just different. Like, right. you feel more of a connection. It's kind of it. funny how, like, there are certain things where you're like, yeah, I would like to see that in a live action. I don't mind it being, like, what it was before. And then right. there's other times where you're like, oh, maybe they should have done it a little bit differently. Or you see something that they did a remake and they do it differently. And you're like, you know what? I like the difference between the two. So it, yeah. it really depends on the mood, like, the mood. It really depends on the atmosphere that they created for these movies to to really like if you are into it you're into it i'm glad you talked about moods because even earlier you talked about how you wanted a dalmatian puppy so much and when a movies come out where the star is an animal right. people tend to want those animals because they're cool and they're great right. and that happened with 101 dalmatians when this movie everyone, came out everyone wanted a dalmatian yeah and then everyone of course the problems are dalmatians are jerks yeah I was gonna say, <laughs> they, they, they do and so a lot of them were were given up and, and put into it's unfortunate it really is unfortunate and stuff, so and it does happen that's the one thing that kind of kills me when it comes to a lot of these uh uh, movies with tons of animals is you know they're, they're, it's it, it's a commodity to them there's so many yeah. different puppies and you know they don't always uh, do what they are told and you know what happens to those animals when they don't yeah. do what they're told yeah you CG and that's what I think ended up happening with Disney they, they got heavy in the CG aspect of the puppies versus actually using the practical effects so that's what I do appreciate especially in 102 Dalmatians they are heavy when it comes to the CG and the animatronics you see it here too with like the raccoons and all that so Although, i do appreciate how they did kind of try to, to, to alleviate the workload for the dogs by mm -hmm. going more uh computer generated and fake i will say something about 102 dalmatians i did feel for the puppy who did not have his spots yeah until you know he started to get them at the end so that was good. spoilers <laughs> and of course you've got arthur weasley in house before yes. they were arthur weasley yeah. in house yes um so everybody remembers them from this first because i mean it was exactly we all grew up with this one, so to speak, when it came out. It's so it. funny because, like, I remember them in this movie, but I never, like, put two to two together until, like, I was watching them and what right. they were, and I came back to this movie. I was like, oh my I god, that's right. I there, forgot yeah. that they were in this movie. I almost feel like we all collectively figured it out together. Like, the internet discovered <laughs> it at the same time. Like, wait a minute, we know these guys. Uh, and of course, yeah, Jeff Daniels kills it no matter what he's in. I love Jeff Daniels. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, Canaan Crunchies would have been so much, so much appreciated too for me if Canaan Crunchies was in this movie because I do not believe Canaan 
crunchies can be beat. They really are a special <laughs> treat. Uh, the commercial for canine crunchies. Uh, it, 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 is, it is its own uh, its own world. It is its own remake. Uh, it does feel like I when I think of the characters, I can separate them from the cartoon and I can separate them yes, from here. Yes. Not so much like with Lion King. With Lion King, it's like okay, well those are I I know who my Timon is. I know who my Pumbaa is. I know who my Simba is. I know who my Mufasa is. Funny enough, Mufasa is really kind of the only one that translates um, from one to the other one. Go figure. Um, but you know, it's you. I, I don't really have a second thought when it comes to the Lion King remake, as I do with the live action 101 Dalmatians. Yeah, like yeah. it's not as memorable for me. Same with Mary Poppins Returns. Same with Aladdin. You know, it's like oh, I, I I'm connected to those ones. But in this case, I'm connected to both, the cartoon and the live also, action. I also feel like it's also for the time, too, because, you know, we grew, well, we grew up in, in the, the renaissance of Disney, you know, Little Mermaid, animation, Lion King, of or the animation. And then when they come out with these live action versions, then we're like, well, we're still kind of holding on to that, that childlike yeah. essence of those animation movies and we're like well we don't want this because we love the originals and I, I, I'm, I would be curious to see if some I mean somebody who grew up with like the 101 Dalmatians animation and right. if they watch this one whether if they would like and they're like no I love the animation right. you know because we we weren't like we weren't born at that yeah, time. This wasn't this movie. ours. It wasn't yeah. our time during that time. Granted, yes, we loved the animation movie, but it older. wasn't like we loved it because we didn't see it when it came out. You know, it fits in that era with there. Alice in Wonderland, Lady in the Tramp, Cinderella. It's all, it's all, yeah, know, it's all a whole those. different batch of animated movies so that we went back to versus we w were there when the other truly really, truly a different right. batch of animated movies. Yeah. Yeah. I feel yeah. like yeah. it would be curious to talk to a kid now who wasn't born when those renaissance movies happened and they just watched it later to see these live action ones and be like if they really like the live action yeah. ones too you know so it's just kind of that perspective that we have to take into account so that's probably why yeah. I, like I love 101 Dalmatians um, and I love the animation, but I also love the live action because, you know, I wasn't really, could, like, I don't have a strong Connection. hold yeah. on the animation movie. Of course. Um, so to where I can be okay with the live but action. But you know who could have had a strong hold on the animation? You guys. So you guys are the well. You yeah. guys are who we could go to. Where were you in that timeline? Was 101 yeah. Dalmatians yours when you were growing up and the live action came out? What did you think when it came out? Was it, oh, the animated is better. I don't like what they did here. Tell us if you never even saw the animated, but you only saw the live action. Tell us your impressions of this movie down in the comments below. You can also like and subscribe. And did the thing on our Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram, start All the social networking joints, you know where they are. Kicking the party, fuel the party, keep the party going on our Patreon. Get us where we need to go. Travis, where are we going? I really like the vest. Uh, September, that's a <laughs> Simpsons reference. September 14th, Tempe, Arizona, the Schmodown. Yes, we are going to be in a Schmodown live. We are facing against the wild berries. Wild berries. It's going to be a hell of a time. If you're in the AZ area, definitely hit that up September 14th. Or if 14th. you're not, cheap hotel somewhere. And it's also going to be okay. live streaming. <laughs> it's also live streaming. You can right. li watch it wherever you are. doesn't matter where you are. And it will drop at 1 p.m. that day. Uh, and you can just watch it from home as it is playing out on stage at the Tempe we'll Improv. Get, a little afternoon delight. get that down in the description of this video. Thank you guys so much. And as always, now it's time to say goodbye. This party is over. Bye. Bye.